Hi, everybody. I have a common question that students ask me, and that is how to find the equation of the circle that passes through three points. So we have here three points that are on this circle, and we want to find the equation of that circle. Now to start, we're going to need a few things from the past, and I've just listed them here. We'll need the midpoint formula. I hope you know all these things already. We need the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and we'll need the distance formula. We will also need to remember that perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. Okay, I've written the equation of a circle here for you. This is the standard form of the equation of a circle x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals to r squared. And in this form, h and k are the coordinates of the center, and r is the radius of the circle. Okay. Now, in order to do this problem, we're going to use a theorem from geometry. You know that to be a good student in geometry, you need to know all of your theorems. If you don't know your theorems or in postulates, then it's very difficult to be successful in geometry. So here's one of them. This is the one we're going to use. The perpendicular bisector of any chord will pass through the center of the circle. The perpendicular bisector of any chord will pass through the center of the circle. So I'm going to try to sketch that for you on this uh, uh, drawing right here. I'm going to draw in chord AB, and I'm going to try to sketch in the perpendicular bisector of chord AB. Uh, it passes through the midpoint, so the midpoint is about there, I'm guessing, and uh, try to draw a line at a right angle to that chord. Not easy, but there it is. And I'm going to call that line L. That's why I put that little L there. So this line is line L. Now I'm going to sketch in chord BC, something like that, and kind of eyeball the middle of that and sketch in the perpendicular bisector, something like this. And that is the perpendicular bisector of BC, and I'm going to call that N, okay? So, the point where these two lines intersect is the center of the circle. This is going to be HK when we're finished, okay? So our next step is to use algebra to find the point of intersection of these two lines, line N and line L. So we need to get the equations of the line. And in order to get the equation of a line, we need a point on the line and maybe the slope of the line. So let's go after line L first, okay? That's the perpendicular bisector of the chord AB. So I'm gonna go after line L. First thing I'm gonna do is to find the midpoint of line, uh, of chord AB. So I'm gonna average the X coordinates and average the Y coordinates and I get the midpoint is negative one-half, negative three-halves. Okay, so that's our midpoint. All right. I also need the slope of chord AB because I need to take the opposite reciprocal of it to get the slope of my line. So the slope of chord AB is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which gives us 1 as our slope. So then the opposite reciprocal of that number, the opposite of 1 is negative 1, and of course the reciprocal of 1 is 1. So the slope of uh, our line, our line L, is going to be negative 1. So I'm going to write the equation of that line. Now I'm going to use slope-intercept form. You might want to use point-slope form, it really doesn't matter. Let me plug in the midpoint because that's the point on the line. So I have negative 3 halves is equal to my slope times negative 1 half, my x coordinate, plus b. We don't know what b is. I'll solve for b. And so if I subtract 1 half from both sides, I get b is equal to negative 4 halves or negative 2. So my equation 
of line L is y is equal to my slope x minus 2. Of course, we do not have to write this one if we don't want to. So that is the equation of line L. Okay, now we're going to repeat that same procedure to get the equation of line N. N is the perpendicular bisector through chord BC. So again, I'm going to need to find the midpoint of chord BC. So the, this is line N I'm going after. Okay, so we have negative 6 plus negative 3 over 2 and 5 minus 4 over 2. We're looking for the midpoint, so that gives us negative 9 halves comma one half as our midpoint. Okay, now I need the slope of chord BC so that I can take the opposite reciprocal of it. The slope of chord BC is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Of course, the plus is here because we have negative negative, okay? So we end up with 9 over negative 3 or negative 3. So that is the slope of chord BC. Now we need to take the opposite reciprocal of it to get the slope of our line. So the opposite of negative 3, of course, is positive 3. And the reciprocal of 3 is 1 third. So the slope of our line is 1 third. Now I'm going to put the slope and the midpoint again into y equals mx plus b. All right, the y coordinate is one half, the slope is one third, the x coordinate is negative nine halves, and we do not know b. So we have one half is equal to negative three halves plus b. If I add negative three halves to both sides, I'm gonna get b is equal to 4 halves, which is 2. So then, my equation is y is equal to my slope, x plus my b, and this is the equation of line n. I'll write it here. Okay, so we have the equations of both of our perpendicular bisectors, and I'm going to find the intersection of those two lines by solving this system of linear equations. I can use various methods. Here, substitution would be easy. So we know that if two expressions are equal to the same thing, in this case y, then they are equal to each other. So I'm going to set them equal to each other. and solve for x. Let me clear that fraction by multiplying both sides by 3. We'll multiply every term by 3, and we have negative 3x minus 6 is equal to x plus 6. Solving for x, I'm going to add 3x to both sides, and I get 4x. Subtract 6x from both sides. I'm sorry, subtract 6 from both sides, and we get negative 12. So x is negative 3. That is the x-coordinate of our center, okay? To get the y-coordinate, I'm going to plug in this negative 3 into either of these. The top one's easy. So y is equal to negative negative 3 minus 2, which is 3 minus 2, which is 1. So my center, the center of the circle, is negative 3, 1. Yay! Okay. Now I need to find the radius. The radius is going to be the distance between the center and either of these points, any of these points. But the easier one to me is point A. So I'm going to use the distance formula to get the distance between those points, the center and point A. Okay, so I have y2, I'm sorry, x2 minus x1, so negative 3 minus 2 squared plus 1 minus 1 squared. Oh, that cancels. That's nice. So the distance then is negative 5 squared, the square root of that, which is just 5. So my radius is 5. 
I have the center and I have the radius so I can write the equation of the circle. The equation of the circle, and that was the point of this whole problem, is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. Simplifying, we have x plus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared is equal to 25. And that is the equation of my circle. So I hope this helped you. Uh, if it did, please press like, leave a comment if you like, and I'll see you next time.